Well, where on earth do we start with what has been an unusual day, a frustrating day in some ways, a day that sort of swung about almost as much as Mitch Marsh uh, was swinging the yeah. ball today, Mike Hussey. What did you make of it? It's probably a good place to start. That's a real positive for Australia was the performance from Mitch Marsh coming back into the team, picking up four wickets. As you said, he swung the ball nicely. The way he set batsmen up as well was incredible. Uh, swinging the ball away and then darting them back into mm. it and tacking the stumps. I thought he was superb for Australia and, and probably luckily so because Tim Payne won the toss, elected to field first and there was a lot of good judges were very surprised with that decision and uh, the way England were playing early, they negotiated the first half an hour well, got through that, got themselves into a position of real strength, three for about 170 at one stage mm. uh, and everyone was thinking, well, Tim Payne's made a massive blunder there. The Australians were uncharacteristically poor in the field as well. Three catches went down early, there were some misfields, uh, missed reviews again as uh, you know, Tim Payne's uh, made a bit of a habit of throughout this uh, series. So. It wasn't going right for Australia, and then suddenly it just turned on its head, and England sort of gave the advantage back to Australia and lost a whole bunch of wickets, and, and we were thinking, oh, well, maybe Tim Payne's decision was the right one at the end of the day, and uh, then we saw Josh Butler, I think, play a magnificent innings towards the end and, and got it back to, it's probably even, Stephen, but I'd say maybe England just in the ascendancy. Yeah, you, you did feel that both sides made errors today and then the other side didn't quite capitalise mm. on them. The, the Tim Payne thing with, with the toss, uh, is, do, is there any reason you think that he would have made that decision? Because it, there were even suggestions that Justin Langer looked surprised perhaps. Yeah, well I think Justin Langer was surprised. I, I, I think because there was a bit of grass on the pitch and a bit of green grass, so the Australians obviously thought there's going to be a bit of movement here early. So they'll be thinking, right, if we can bowl England out cheaply here, then the Australians will have the chance to bat when the pitch is at its best. You'd expect it to be at its best day two, day three. So I think the plan would have been bowl England out cheaply, bat big in the first innings, and then uh, hopefully have such a big lead that it's going to be really difficult for England to get back into the game. Unfortunately, Test cricket doesn't always work that way, and uh, I thought England fought really hard, particularly early. You will also, I mean, they obviously had Mitch Marsh coming in, they had Peter Siddle coming in as fresh bowlers, mm. but, but the other guys out here, it's only a few days since... They were out on the on the field and bowling their hearts out in mm. Manchester. That m perhaps had some effect today as well? That, that's right. And test matches are played over five days. It's not just one or two <laughs> days that you can win a test match, particularly against a good team. So uh, You'd wonder sometimes how England bat. If it does, <laughs> if it is meant to last five days. I think days. you're being a bit harsh there, uh, Mel. But, uh, you know, no, you're exactly right. Australian bowlers had to work so hard in Manchester to get that win. Uh, quick turnaround, and then Tim Payne's put him straight back in the field again. So I think that's a tough ask. They did try and bolster the attack by bringing Mitch Marsh into the team. Personally, I was surprised they dropped Mitchell Stark because mm. I thought Mitch Marsh could do a similar job to a Peter Siddle. They sort of cancel each other out. But Mitch Stark has got that X factor, and he's a sort of bowler that the more he bowls, the better he gets. So to give him one game, I thought he bowled quite well in Manchester, to be fair, and then to rip that player out who has got that X factor, he might have been the one that could have just clean, cleaned England up at the end and, and, bowl, and helped bowl them out. So I was a little bit surprised with that decision. And of England's batting, now, what are your thoughts on that? We saw Rory Burns work really hard, and, mm. and it was probably one of the best starts of, of an innings that he's got. He seems to have almost got better as the series has yeah. gone on. But to see two batsmen get out after lunch when the clouds had gone mm. uh, to, to mistimed pull shots, is that, again, is that a fatigue thing? Oh, I think so, yeah. That, that, that comes into my mind. I think watching it, um, so, sometimes as a batsman, when you know it's going to be difficult early in that first session, you put so much effort and energy into just getting through that first two hours, and they did such a great job. They just lost just the one wicket, uh, worked extremely hard, um, did the bulk of the really tough work and then sometimes you just mentally relax a little bit you think ah, oh, I've done the hard work now it's going to get easier but quite often you have to you have to start again you have to make sure you're still as switched on as you were in the first session perhaps they just mentally relaxed a little bit played a couple of loose shots and uh, and that, that was uh, the cause of their uh, demise but you're right as well it's been a long tough mm -hmm. summer you know there's been World Cup play, uh, guys playing in the World Cup there's been Ashes which has been so intense you've got to be some mental fatigue there and, and players are going to make mistakes. And uh, I looked at maybe Stokes' dismissal as well. It's been a massive summer for this guy. Emotionally as, yeah, as well. Exactly as right. And, and it just looked like he just wasn't quite there mentally today. And, and, and unfortunately, when that happens, you, you're going to make mistakes and uh, he'll be disappointed with that dismissal today. And, and just as a, as a proud Western Australian, I'm just going to let you <laughs> wax lyrical about Mitch Marsh because he's a player, probably the only player in Australia who's more maligned than Mitch Marsh is his brother, Sean. <laughs> uh, how pleased are you for him just on a personal level? 
to, to have come and done that. Yeah, without doubt. And, and maybe it showed today someone that had fresh legs and a fresh mind coming into the contest today. He looked really pumped up. He had a lot of energy. He probably used a lot of that energy up. We saw him cramping late in the day, <laughs> which was a little bit humorous for all of us, but it wouldn't have been for him. But he did bowl really well. And it was important that he bowled well because England got themselves into a position of strength. But the thing is, he got that ball moving. Mm. He really got the ball to swing nicely. And, and, and I think we haven't always seen that from Mitch Marsh. We, we've no. normally seen him just hit a good length and just be patient that way. But to be able to get that old-fashioned swing going was really nice to see. And then the way he set batsmen up. I thought he did Johnny Bairstow beautifully. <laughs> swing away, swing away, swing away. Johnny Bairstow was thinking that's all he's doing. Got one to dart back in and got him LBW. And, and that'll give him enormous confidence uh, going forward because he needs a good performance here. He's been in and out of that Australian test team for some time now. Um, just to give the selectors that sort of knowledge that he can do the job with the ball uh, is going to be really encouraging for him. I know he wants some runs in, in, in this test as well. Yeah, well, if he does that and proves himself in that all role, a rounder role, that sort of role that Australia loves as well. Yeah, w without doubt. I, I think having a top quality all rounder, it really just adds so much balance to the team mm. uh, and, and it really helps the bowlers out a lot too. As we mentioned earlier, the, the, all the from both teams really, the fast bowlers have had to work so hard uh, they're going to be tired. Yeah. And uh, so having that extra bowler come in and help out is, is really handy. Well, we'll see how he goes tomorrow, assuming, of course, that Australia will be batting tomorrow, and that's pretty certain. We'll find out how soon, of course, in the morning. For all the details on this test, make sure you stay logged on to ESPN Cricket Boat.